This is AQA A-Level Chemistry and it's the year 12 kinetics topic. It's part two of a series of five videos. In this video, we're going to look at the impact of surface area on rate of reaction. I'm going to recommend that you pause as you go and then review your answers and see what you're understanding and what you might need to work on a little further. So I'm going to jump straight in here. How does surface area affect rate of reaction and you can see actually I've already jumped in with the answer. The highest rate will be the magnesium powder rather than the magnesium ribbon for reasons that we will come to later. And I've also started to build the symbol equation. I'm not writing the word equation out. We will do the symbol equation now. Mg reacting with oxygen which we're remembering is diatomic so that is O2 and we make magnesium oxide and you would be expected to know the formula is MgO because magnesium is group 2, so it forms plus 2 ions. Oxygen is group 6, so it forms minus 2 ions. So if you work out the formula, it comes to MgO. I then need to balance it, and I've got two oxygens on the left, so I need 2 MgO on the right, which means I need 2 Mg on the left. But we should always be mindful now of state symbols. Magnesium is going to be solid, oxygen is gaseous, and magnesium oxide is also solid. It's the white ash that you see in the experiments where you will have observed or carried out the burning of magnesium. But let's move on and look at surface area in a little more detail. How can this diagram explain the impact of changing surface area on the rate of reaction? Have a think about it, and when you're ready, move on. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is highlight the key difference between the left-hand side, original sample, and what happens when the sample is being cut up. We're seeing it in two dimensions. This would obviously be happening in three dimensions. But everything that I've highlighted in yellow was previously inside the sample. These were not surfaces that were available to collide and react. So if this is a piece of magnesium, and it's in acid, and I break that magnesium down, as I've done here, I'm suddenly exposing more surface. And that's going to allow for more collisions, more successful collisions, and therefore a faster rate of reaction. And similar to what we saw on the previous video with concentration and with pressure, we can actually quantify this. If I double the surface area, I will double the number of collisions that can take place. And if I double the number of collisions that take place, I can double the number of successful collisions that take place. And doubling the number of successful collisions will double the rate of reaction. And again, we've got double, 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 double. We're going to move on and we're going to look at a practical way that we can measure that. And in the first instance, I want you to have a look at how we would measure, what we would measure to prove what's happening in terms of rate of reaction. So on the first one, we have got a conical flask. It's on a balance. There's cotton wool in the top. And we are measuring the decrease in mass. We're measuring the decrease in mass because gas will escape through the cotton wool. And so the mass does go down. And we can measure that. If it's carbon dioxide, for example, in a metal carbonate and acid, and we will see that that mass will go down fastest at the beginning. And then as the reaction goes on, the rate that gas is lost will decrease until eventually the reaction stops when the limiting reagent has run out. In this case, the limiting reagent is the marble chips. Now, I've just highlighted the cotton wool. What is the purpose of the cotton wool as a practical um, question, this is quite reasonable. And what we're looking at is there is the chance that if you've got a vigorous reaction going in, you might get spitting of liquid, which would give us a false loss of mass. It wouldn't be down to gas being produced. This prevents that. The gas can escape through the cotton wool, but we don't lose any of the liquid. On method two, we are measuring the volume of gaseous product. And it could be done in two ways. It could be how long does it take to collect X cm cubed? How long to get 10 cm cubed of gas? How long to get 50 cm cubed of gas? But you could alternatively say how much gas is produced in Y seconds. So I'm going to measure the volume 
every 10 seconds or every 30 seconds. And that will allow us to plot a curve similar to what you're going to see in a second. But these practical methodologies, it's really important that you have handle on what we do, but also why we do them. In terms of this graph, there are a few questions that are going to come up. Have a go at each one. Now, the curve for small chips is initially steeper than the curve for large chips. Why is that the case? And what we're looking at here is that smaller chips have a larger surface area. And if they've got a larger surface area, that means there will be an increased rate of reaction, as we've discussed earlier in this video. Next question. We know the total mass of carbon dioxide produced in both is actually the same. They both level off at the same point, at just around two grams. Why is that the case? Again, what we're looking for here is really important information. We are making the same volume of CO2. We may have got there faster with the small chips, but actually the marble chips, we had the same mass of them. They may have been cut up into smaller pieces, but they were the limiting reagent. So they determine what mass of carbon dioxide can be made. Why does the curve get less steep and eventually reach a gradient of zero? So on this one, as the reactants are used up, we have fewer particles left to react. And that means we have fewer with energy equal to or greater than the activation energy. And that therefore means there's less successful collisions, so the rate will slow down. And eventually it's going to stop, because when the limiting reagent runs out, the reaction can no longer continue, so the gradient goes to zero when no more gas is produced. That takes us to the end of this video. Thank you for listening, and goodbye.